And, and you know, I had this conversation with, sorry to derail no, okay. the arc of the podcast, but I, I had this conversation with Pete, who was on the phone with earlier. Yeah. Um, and for the viewers, Pete is a high level blue belt who trains Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, but he had said, oh, if you watch the Gordon Ryan, Craig Jones, um, jiu-jitsu match which are two world champions two of the most highly respected jiu-jitsu guys you know it really looks like gordon ryan hurt his arm while he was in the arm bar i said yeah he probably did he probably broke his arm or he probably like hyperextended it and he suffered permanent injuries when it rains it probably hurts his arm a little bit you know what i mean and he said why is that worth it i said well you have to i mean yeah there's always ego but you have to make a calculated decision me personally if I'm fighting Grappling Industries Boston, which is a local level tournament, I'm looking to get 12 matches in a day, tons of experience against high level guys or medium level guys. I'm not going to break my arm. Sure. I'm tapping early every time. I'm walking home the way I walked in. Mm-hmm. Conversely, if I'm competing for a world title, high level tournament, it's being televised, it's streamed. Um, the prices of my seminars go up after. I go from a $30 a seminar guy to an $80 a seminar guy. Um, you know, it's it's a matter of how much do my privates cost? Oh, they cost $50 an hour now. After that fight, you're an $80 to $100 an hour private. Right. Um, your social media blew up. You have the highlights to blow up. You can talk shit to big name guys. People will pay attention to you. All of these things should factor into the decision that you make. So if you're Gordon Ryan getting your arm partially broken and you still escape it, that's actually worth it. That's a, that's a commodity decision. You've decided that this is financially worth it if you take advantage of it. Mm. And so maybe it's worth it to break your arm and keep fighting. Right. Maybe it's not. You just have to decide when and where it is. If it changes the whole course of my life, yeah, fuck it. It's just an arm. Yeah. If it's... If it's nothing that nobody ever knows about, yeah, I'm tapping early every time. Right. It's just like guys who fight like motherfuckers in the gym for sparring and whatever. It's like, what are you doing this for? Yeah, it's so stupid. No, you broke my nose for what? <laughs> yeah, mad dumb. Mad dumb. Yeah. It's all ego at that point. Right. No, the game changed once fighters realized that they could make money by promoting themselves. It's, it's specifically in MMA. Like before, the only way you would get any buzz... As if you had a war. As if you were the guy who was either in wars or the guy who knocked people out. Chuck Liddell, who checks both of those boxes. Yeah, unfortunately for you him. Know. Yeah. Um, Anderson Silva, GSP, they were just beating guys, beating guys, beating guys. They were phenoms, and they were doing it in dramatic fashion. Before, that was the only way. And plus, back then, you could get sponsors. Yeah, you could wear Condom Depot on your shorts in the middle of the octagon. Yeah, exactly. So that's good, yeah. But now, it's like... You don't even need to be the best fighter. You don't even need to be doing that. Because not only do, in this day and age, you can make money from a thousand different avenues. Now, fighters realize that they can leverage. They can leverage to get more money on their contract based on, you know, the following they have. Hey, I'm selling out arenas when I'm the co-main. People are coming to see me specifically sometimes. You know what I'm saying? Like, O'Malley made... uh, he makes six figures every fight, regardless of where he is on the card. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? He he fought this last guy, this Brazilian kid, and he absolutely wiped the fucking mat with him. He dogged him, beat him in the first or second round, knocked him out clean. And uh, that guy, like you said, lost brain cells, lost some time off not only his career but his life. Might, you know, punch his wife one day for some fucking reason. You know, like just whatever. And, and these are uh, real things. Yeah. And didn't get paid. Like, That's what I'm saying, yeah. Got paid maybe a little more than the minimum. The minimum's 12 Gs. I don't know if you knew that. It's 10, I think. Is oh, it is it 12 now? I think it's 12. It was 10, but yeah. Yeah, so it's 12 Gs. Yeah, he probably made 15 to 20 grand to fight O'Malley. After paying the, after paying people out, you maybe, maybe get half that. Maybe. Well, yeah, I mean, plus tax taken out. Yeah. That's the thing is like, if you're a low-level fighter, your predominant source of income should not be fighting. No. It should be, and, and unfortunately, just the way it works, you should be doing every podcast interview. You should be doing all the shit that distracts you from mm-hmm. your training and whatever, but you should be fundraising. You should do a GoFundMe. You should 
just because of the way the shitty way it works out. Actually, shout out to Jake Paul.